We are one adventure at a time. Dave, Carrie, and Rudolph. We are excited to start our third year of full-time living and traveling in our tiny home on wheels. Join us as we travel North America, exploring and sharing the beauty around us. This week, we experienced some hiccups along the way. Our brakes get so hot that they began to smoke, and we end up in the shop not once, but twice. We actually pay for camping, and we finally make it to our majestic boondocking location, where we attempt our own do-it-yourself awning, and the boys go fishing. And now, this week's story begins on the side of the road of the Million Dollar Highway. We had our brakes done in Tennessee about two, two, thousand, months. two months, two thousand miles ago. We've had a lot of problems since then with them overheating and this was a pretty bad one. By the time we pulled over there was blue smoke just bellowing out of the, the wheels. So I got to grab the fire extinguisher. We came out and we've been just letting them cool. We're only about four miles away from a town, so we're gonna have them checked out this time and find out what is going on. in Tennessee in May and we've been having some pretty serious problems uh, since then and we just want to have them looked at and diagnosed. Hey, we're looking at Thursday. A few hours later we get a call that they have an opening for us today and of course we waste no time and head straight for the shop. And this stuff's kind of tacky. It's still sticky because it didn't dry but you can see it's all over the slides. And what the heck is it? And the slides are kind of bent and Is that the sensor and cable? That's the sensor cable that was broke. Oh. It was just plugged in at the other end. Oh, wow. None of these were hooked up on the little slide deals that they're supposed to be on. With new brake pads installed, the auto shop owner tells us to go test them out. And if we are still having problems, come back on Thursday. So we meet up with our friends, Ed and Maria, but the weather is not in our favor. We just rolled up here to camp and it's raining, a little bit of hail, uh, so a thunderstorm moving through. I'm gonna go outside and check our camp out. This place looks awesome. We're kind of just hanging out in our vehicle right now. And our friends, Ed and Maria, they're here hanging out in their Jeep. They got their rooftop tent to set up, but we're gonna hold off for just a little bit and hopefully it will stop raining and then get that up. Go down here, there's already a big puddle formed. And it hasn't been raining that long, but it's been raining pretty hard. This area looks awesome. This is gonna be fun. As soon as it dries out just a little bit, hopefully tomorrow, we'll hang a hammock up here. We're right on the edge of the, the creek that's going into Silver Jack Reservoir. Of course, I'll have to keep an eye on the creek level too if it keeps raining this hard and make sure we're not putting ourselves in a dangerous position with the water rising. And I'm looking forward to fishing this too. This is gonna be a lot of fun. The puddles are starting to build pretty fast here. And the ground is mostly rock, riverbed rock. So I don't think we're gonna have to worry about too much mud. Although it didn't take long with this kind of rain and occasional hail to get the little creeks going, the puddles flowing. Yeah, I'm getting soaked. Just about ready to go back in for a little bit and dry out. 
Okay, so Orvis Hot Springs, Ridgeway, Colorado. Some tent and vehicle camping available. 24 hour access to the springs and to the community kitchen. So when it's pouring rain out, you have a shelter to go to. So right there, that sounds. We're getting wet anyway, we might as well get wet in the hot spring, right? Sound good, dude? Yep. I agree. Okay. Sounds good to me. Good rainy day adventure. I don't know if it's going to work out. Of course, once we get over the pass, the storm breaks and blue skies appear. But we are committed. The hot springs are calling us. And yet again, more hiccups along the journey. Oh man, we thought we had the brake thing fixed and they're smoking again. We pulled over on the side of the road here because we've been having problems with our brakes and they smelled hot and sure enough we got out there are hot to the touch we couldn't even touch the wheels blue smoke coming from the front passenger side brake so we're letting them cool down and we were looking down into the valley and up the hill over there and we saw elk so taking a closer look it was it's the biggest elk herd we have ever seen so if you're ever going to pull over with car problems it's pretty amazing to see something that special. That was a lot of elk. That was very cool. The hot spring did not work out. They wanted $49 per person to stay overnight at their location. And then you did get free use of the hot springs, but we're just not up for spending $49 a night per person. And they had no openings, it was full. I don't know how it's full at that price. So we ended up at an RV park with hot showers here and a laundry facility close to the area. We're gonna take the van to the shop so that's nice. Uh, we normally don't pay for camping, but with the brake problem, we wanted to stay close. And we are in Ridgeway State Park, just outside of Montrose in Colorado. And I have to admit, the hot showers were awesome here. But I'm ready to get back in the woods and go boondocking as soon as we get this brake problem fixed up and taken care of. We head back to Montrose, Colorado to have the brakes looked at once again. Well, we're here at, on time at the auto shop and it looks busy. The parking lot is packed here, but we're gonna get our brakes looked at. Hopefully this time uh, we'll find out what's causing them to heat up so much and start smoking. Everything is looking good as far as pads, spinning, there's no restriction. But here's my thought. I just pulled the cap on the master cylinder. Yeah. There's something in the fluid. It's all swirled. I'm thinking it's water. So, in the brake fluid? Yeah. Have you ever had a brake flush done on this? No. Okay. Dot four, it's dot four brake fluid. Euros use nothing but dot four. Dot four is a better for heat. The downside is they absorb water bad. You can't compress water. Yeah. yeah. Hydros don't work underwater. With new brake pads and new brake fluid, we hope our brake problems are behind us. And we head back into the mountains for more majestic Colorado views.
Our friends Ed and Maria have moved on to tackle one of the hardest off-road trails in Colorado. And of course, we cannot follow them in our van. Uh, we had a great time and we look forward to meeting with those guys again in the future and I'm sure we will. So we came back up the hill after getting our brakes done or worked on and our spot was taken, the one down by the river with all the trees. And so we looked around, it didn't take long and we found another location. There are so many different places to camp here and they are all beautiful. I honestly do not think that you can get a bad campsite up here. Between the mountains and the meadows, aspen trees, the pine trees, it's just awesome. I'm really happy that we're up here. It feels great and I'm looking forward to exploring our once again around this local area. Today I got a little project I'm going to try out. I'm going to try making an awning and I already bought some supplies here at Home Depot and let me show you what I got. So I bought three of these 10 foot long half inch conduits and two of them are going to be the poles that hold up the tarp and the other one's going to keep the tarp stable. And there's the tarp itself. That's eight by 10 foot tarp and I've got six spikes and I'm going to use that to hold everything in place and I'll show you how that's going to work a bag of cables, cable ties, and some high-vis cord. So pretty easy to get supplies, and they're all inexpensive. This whole project's gonna be under $50. And the question is, is it gonna work? Because it's gotta go above that door and not drag on top so it can still slide open. And there's Rudel's ball. And he's letting me know. Go get it, Rudel. So I'm going to put all this together and see if it works out. If it does, it's going to be a cheap, inexpensive awning. Okay, so I think one of the key factors of this is the corner and how we use the nail spike. So if you can see it here, we've got the nail spike and we're putting it through the tarp and then through our little line, that the tie down line, and then back into the conduit. So once that's in, Carrie simply just moves the conduit into place and then we put our tie down down. And we got it at about a 45 degree angle so not only is it keeping it down but it's also stretching it out in the middle to where it's not sagging too much. And I, why we got six of the spikes, uh, we really like the spikes for the tent stakes because they're super strong and they just, they're, nothing, they're not gonna come out no matter what. So we got two lines coming from this that's what they look like. We got two lines coming from our tarp. Because we're using the conduit and the conduit's at a steep angle like that, we can get away with just one line and not put several lines to hold it in place. And the last idea, the reason why we bought six stakes is if we're in soil that's, or in a storm where there's lots of wind, we can put a spike in here and then nail it in and then put the conduit right on top of it and it will be holding in place. I mean, it won't move anywhere. You just gotta make sure you buy a spike that actually fits up in your half inch conduit. Hey, that's solid. That's, I don't think that's gonna move. What do you think? I like it. We'll see how it does in a windstorm. Yeah, we're gonna, it looks like we're gonna test it out right away because there's some storm clouds moving in. Plenty of room for the door to open. Yeah, and I was worried about the door opening. So we have no problem at all. We can slide the door open and it's not even coming close to the top. We went straight to the roof rack. I use uh, plastic cable ties for now, just to see if we like it and it's working. And then if I like it, I'm just gonna lash it with some cord. The only downside is how close this pole is to the door, but that's where our roof rack ended, so. Yeah, it's so, doable. yeah, we can still get in and out the door. It's not in the way, it's just something you gotta think about. And we can get in this one And too. we can still open the passenger door. I think this is a really good, 
a cheap alternative to an awning. One thing that we did not use that I bought was one of the conduits and I was gonna stretch it across the top. Right here? Yeah, right in the middle, just to keep that bow out. But I'm okay with a little bit of bow. I think because our rack is so high that there's plenty of room that we don't hit our head. Yeah. And it'll let water drain off, right? Yep, so these conduit pipes were $8 a piece, so we really didn't need that one. We'll probably end up taking that one back. It's actually a lot of room. It is. Now all we need is some kind of chair or something, <laughs> which we don't have. Which we're getting. Which we're gonna get some chairs. Maybe before our fourth year, we'll get a chair. We have an awning after three years. Pretty cool. Fine ball? No, it's not that way. It's this way. Go find ball. You found it! Good boy! That's hard work. The weekenders have gone, so we upgraded to a spot on the creek. Not very far from the meadow, actually just across the way. Bird and I like to come out in the morning, sit by the, the creek and have our breakfast. And here's the van. Nice open area, so we're getting plenty of solar. A little bit of shade. And we still have a view. Everywhere you go, there's a view here. There's our mountain, just the other side of it. We are attempting to make it to Silverjack? Silverjack Reservoir. So we're gonna follow the creek down. It's about a mile, probably not much more than that. A mile and a half, I think. It's gonna wind on down and we'll see if we can catch some fish along the way. Well, fishing with Rudel is pretty much impossible. Yes, <laughs> do the best we can do. He'll have a fun. Yeah, so it'll be pretty, I'm sure, all the way down there. Maybe we'll see a bear. 
I would love to see a bear. From a distance. Or a moose. Or a moose. They're up here. It's beautiful here. Good day for a nice walk. Yep, absolutely. Okay, let's see how long this lasts before Rudel has to be on a leash. Really? Yeah. Is Rudel helping? Rudel, come here. Come here. Okay, least time before Rudel gets lured. Back when we had a house and kayaks and stuff, I used to take Rudel along with me in my kayak and he would fish with me and he loved it. So ever since then, he's neurotic when it comes to fishing. He's and looking at the lure. All he can think about is the lure or, or the fish I'm catching. Rainbow? The rainbow trout. This one's <laughs> this one's pretty thin. No brutal. Oh, go fishy, go. There he goes. Yeah, I'm done fishing. Uh-oh, what happened? The hooks are gone. <laughs> Probably the last couple bites I didn't catch nothing. <laughs> Can you replace them? It's a whole lure ruined. Looks like it's broken. I'm still gonna fish a little bit though. With that? Yeah. Okay. How are you gonna catch anything? I'm not. If you don't catch anything, why do you fish? Pondering questions. There's big fish in this hole. That's, you know, usually I bring one lower and I can fish all day on it. Panther Martins usually don't break. You'll, you'll lose them from your line being torn up, but this is the first one I've seen break. We made it to Silver Jack Reservoir. And I think there might be a storm moving in. Are we gonna get wet on the walk back? I don't think so. There's a big cloud right behind you. I wanted to give a big thank you to our patrons, Dennis and Pam from Tennessee, who recommended this location in Colorado. So far, this is our favorite location in Colorado. Yeah, I think this could possibly be in our top three for the entire year. Yeah. Okay, so our favorite things about this area, if you can see behind us, there's a st thunderstorm brewing, and this happens almost every afternoon. A lot warmer yeah. than the creek. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so it doesn't get too hot, seems like. About the time it's starting to get too hot, the clouds move in. Sometimes we get a shower and cool it down. Yeah. The mountain views are fantastic, the meadows, and there's lots of fish in all the creeks around here. Yeah, and of course, anytime I'm near water, I'm a happy girl. And you found mushrooms. There are I did. a lot of mushrooms here. Edible mushrooms. Okay, let's talk about rig sides. Any size rig can get in here. From Ridgeway, it's about 23 miles, but it will take you an hour the drive is very slow and tedious. The road is good. There's a there, little bit of washboard. There is a little bit of washboard and it is worth getting back in here because it's 20 or 30 miles away from any major towns or supplies. It, there's 
the people out here are all out here to camp and not out here to party. Yeah. Well, they got their quads. Well, yeah. <laughs> Which brings us to amenities. There are two pit toilets. There is no water or trash and there is no cell coverage. So you're going to need to bring everything pretty much that you need. Yeah, the dip dispersed camping locations here are quite spread out so don't be surprised if you don't find one near a pit toilet yeah and don't limit yourself make sure you take your time and look around because there is a gym in every corner and there are campsites everywhere yeah. you really have to go explore these little nooks and crannies and roads and we stopped counting there are so many campsites yeah. we here. stopped at 50 and it just kept mm -hmm. going so there's a lot of places to camp a lot of room for everyone now the nearest town is Ridgeway, and that's about 21 miles. It's a smallish town. Um, it has your basic amenities, but Montrose is just over 30 miles away, and it will have every amenity you will need in that town. So this is a dog-friendly area. Obviously, if you're around people, you want to keep your dog on a leash till you find out what's going on. But Rudel loves it here. There's yes. no cactus. There's nothing for him to hurt himself with. It's been very dog-friendly. Now, there has been evidence of moose in the area, so a leash might be a good idea. We have not seen one. And a bear was spotted on the mountain behind us. Of course, we didn't see the bear either. We spotted twice and we missed it. <laughs> Anything that we missed? I don't think so. Um, this is not a hidden gem. It is well known and is very busy. So when you come here, you might have to camp in the meadow like we did and then trade up to one of these more premium spots. Yeah, we actually but, did like three different camp locations here. We just kept moving because every one of them was so good. And the views are spectacular no matter where you go. So it doesn't really matter. If you're coming to Colorado, I would say this is one place that you want to check out if you like off the beaten path and dispersed free camping. Yeah, I wouldn't come in late fall without a four-wheel drive. I think it's going to get pretty cold, and I wouldn't want to get snowed in back here. We're yep, pretty far yep. back. <laughs> so as always, we thank you for watching. We thank you for subscribing, and we'll see you next week, and we'll still be in Colorado. Yes, we will. <laughs> Can't wait to see what's next myself. <laughs> if you would like to support our channel, please consider becoming a patron. Or check out our new merchandise at oneadvancereatatime.com. We also have stickers available in our website store. Thank you for watching.